Hello and welcome to another episode of Mean Brews. Today we're covering British Brown Ale. Yes, I know I said we would cover Czech Dark, but I have a special episode lined up for that. I may be traveling to the Czech Republic and maybe interviewing some people there uh, in the next couple months. So we're going to do a couple styles before we get there. Uh, so let's get right into the data. I found 40 British Brown Ale recipes, one best of show, 23 gold, 7 silver, 4 bronze, and 5 award winning. Here's a new slide. Um, here I'm presenting the years that I've uh, found data points for from 1981, a lot in the 80s and 90s, then a gap, and then the early 2000s, and pretty steady since then. The BJCP style is 13B, a multi brown caramel centric British ale without the roasted flavors of a porter. As you can imagine, going back to the 80s, I'm seeing pretty substantial evolution, changes in malts and all that, and a pretty uh, broad uh, variation in the style, mainly around the different types of ingredients, malts and, uh, and uh, hops used for this style. Original gravity ranged from 1.038 to 1.068. The mean was 1.050, which was on the, the high end of the BJCP range. And I'm going to be right on that mean with my recipe. Uh, final gravity, huge sweep compared to BJ. Maybe BJCP needs to update this. 1.004 to 1.030. One, one at each extreme. The average was outside the range. Uh, 1.015 and I will be 1.013 just based upon my mash profile, all the grains and the yeast I use. IBUs anywhere between 18 and 34, right almost on the average, or right in the mid-range of the BJCP, 24 was the average, and I'm going to be right at 24, no evolution of that either. Uh, SRM, uh, almost all in within the range of BJCP, ranging from 13 to 24, the average was 18 or 36 EBC, and I'm just going to be a little higher at 19 based upon my malts that I chose. We are seeing a decline over time uh, to somewhere around, uh, to that average, 18 uh, for this style. So maybe you should try to stick to that. Uh, the older recipes seem to be a lot darker. Uh, for the malts used, regardless if they used it or not, uh, the average was 80% base, 10% uh, crystal, 5% roasted malt, 2.4% toast, and 2.6% adjunct. Um, toasted malts were seeing an increase. It was, uh, let's see, 2.4 was the average, and that's going up to about 4% uh, on the recent recipes. Now the distribution, this is only if they use that malt. So for, for the base grains, the range was 60 to 97% of the grist. None were outside of that, with an average of about 80% of the grist. And I'm going to be right at that average with my recipe. You zoom in on the specialty malts. Let's start with crystal, anywhere 1% crystal to 22% crystal, with an average of about 10. Uh, toast, let's see, roast malt is this, so about 5% roast, anywhere between 1 and 12, 13% of the grist was roast malts. Toasted malts, anywhere between 2 and 14%. Only a third of the recipes use toast malts, but that's increasing with the recent recipes. And then adjuncts anywhere between uh, about 1% to 24%. Only, again, a, a little less than a third here used adjuncts. I'll be using crystal right at the mean. A little bit less roast malt uh, just to get my color where it needs to be. And then I will be using toasted malts at about 7.7 or 8%. For the base malts, the most prominent, 94% uh, of the re 94% of the recipes used a Maris Otter or Golden Promise on an average of 77% of the grist, and I'm going to be at 80 because I'm not using any of these. They just weren't prominent enough uh, to, to warrant me putting them in, in my recipe. But to go through them is Munich, Mild, Wheat, Vienna, and Six Row in one recipe right there uh, were the other base malts used. Crystal malts, we had a medium crystal, anywhere between 1 and 15%. Uh, about half the recipes used medium crystal, at about 7.3% of the grist. Other ones, uh, crystal 90, anywhere 1% to 15%. Uh, 33, a third of the recipes used a dark crystal. 
Um, I don't think I've, done, I've covered that. Dark crystal at about 5% of the grist. I'm going to be using a light crystal or a medium crystal here uh, at about 7. And I am going to use, there's a dark crystal. 35% of the recipe is 5% of the grist. And I'm going to be shooting a little bit under the mean at about 2.5% of the grist. Toasted malts, biscuit, victory. Five, uh, not 5%, 25% of the recipes, a quarter of the recipes use vic victory or biscuit at an average of 6.8% of the grist. Others use were special roast, aromatic, and amber malts. And I'll be using, uh, again, at about 7 point, I think it's 7.7 .7 was where it landed here. Roast malts, chocolate uh, malt was the most prominent and a huge range between half a percent all the way up to 11 Um 88, almost 90% of the recipes used uh, chocolate malt at 3.1% of the grist. The next was roasted barley. Again, a huge range again. Right around that average, that seems sweet spot seems to be about 3% of the grist uh, for each of these malts. And the average was five, remember. So people are combining them. Some people are combining them up. I'm just going to use chocolate at 2% to get the color I need. Adjuncts, uh, these were all pretty much the early recipes using adjuncts and they were all over the board. Uh, flaked malts, molasses, brown rice, brown sugar, nothing more than 10%. So people are just, this is probably where people are adding their unique little adders to this style to make it, make it differentiate from all the other beers on the table. I'm not going to be using a uh, adjunct. Uh, looking at single malts and I checked each one to see how it's changing over time. Light Crystal was, was dropping off to nothing, and Victory Biscuit was dropping as well, but I will be using it since toast in general is being increased, increased, increasingly used for this style. We had 15 different bittering hops used. EKG, Northern Brewer, Willamette, and Fuggles, and Steering Goldings made up the three quarters of the bittering hops. Some other ones here. Um, I'm going to be sticking with EKG, uh, classic for this style. Uh, ten flavoring hops were used, EKG and Fuggles, almost two-thirds of them. I wouldn't go outside of that. I know there others have here. Um, I'll be sticking with EKG again just for simplicity and because the data says so. Roma hops, uh, again, EKG Cascade down here. Wow, some of the early recipes used Cascade Styrian Goldings. I'm not sure what happened there. Willamette and Fuggles and a little, a few others. Uh, I'll be using EKG again, same hop for all three editions. A couple recipes use dry hops, Haller and Cascade. I will not be using a dry hop for this style, just didn't, two out of 40 is not enough to, to bring it into my recipe. For the rate of hop additions, 58% of the recipes used a flavor hop at 0.12 ounce per gallon or 0.9 grams per liter. 60% of the recipes, a little bit more, use the aroma hops at 0.19 ounce per gallon or 1.42 grams per liter. And two recipes use dry hops. Uh, big range here on the dry hops. Average is 0.21 ounce per gallon. I will be using on the low end of the aroma hops, uh, 0.1. And on the high end of the flavor hops, 0.18, I believe. Um, and I won't be using any dry hop. We are seeing an increase in the number of recipes that use flavor hops. Uh, in in the this this style of beer, and this is why I use those rates that I published earlier. Um, you can see the orange is, is the aroma hops just dropping down to about 0.1 ounce per gallon. That's about a half a half an ounce in a five gallon batch, um, and then this is almost an ounce at flavor uh, increasing. Pretty good correlation coefficients as well for for those ch trends and changes in in time. Um, we had two different mash types. About a quarter use the step mash. The majority is the single infusion, which I will use uh, the single infusion mash. Uh, for the mash rests, uh, the average mash rest temperature for the acid rest was 114 Fahrenheit or 46 Celsius for 28 minutes. Protein was 130 or 54 Celsius for 31 minutes. These are all pretty broad ranges of temperatures as well. Uh, beta rest, 146 or 63 Celsius for 33 minutes, half hour. And then the main sacrification, uh, 153 Fahrenheit or 67 Celsius for 55 minutes. And that's where my recipe will be. I won't be doing any other rest, uh, stops there. Um, for the duration, it was 55 minutes was the average, but that's increasing over time to somewhere around 60. So I'll be, using, I'll be doing an hour-long mash. 
Bowl duration anywhere between 60 and 90 minutes. A uh, huge bias towards the 60. 64 was the mean, and I'll be at uh, 60 minutes. I had not eight. We had quite a few yeast used. It's not eight. Um, most prominent was Woodbread Dry, White Lab 007, or Y Yeast 1098. Then the Fuller Strain, uh, Worthington White Shield Prips. This was used in the earlier recipes, uh, really not used at all recently. Uh, and then Chico, Boddington's, Whitbread, and then some others here. Um, I will be using the Whitbread Dry White Lab 007. Um, some yeast evolution here. Um, so let's just follow this. The blue curve is Fuller's. Fuller's is increasing as well as um, the Whitbread, which is the orange curve. Either of these are right about 50% of the recipe. Half the recipes are using one or the other. So um, this is definitely, use one of these two. If you if you prefer the Fuller strain, I love the Fuller strain. I also love 007, so I'm sticking with the, the data and uh, since they just lined up perfectly here. The Prips, again, very early on, that's 100% of the recipes use that and then just dropped to nothing. Water chemistry, calcium average 85, magnesium 10. Sodium 40, sulfate, sorry, I missed, sorry, that's off the chart here. Uh, sulfate 56, chloride 65. I'll be on the low end of calcium and magnesium, a little low on sodium, and I'm hitting both those numbers for sulfate to chloride ratio. Uh, I, this is because I'm starting with uh, uh, RO water and building my profile up. Fermentation temperatures anywhere between 57 and 85 for all the strains. Just looking at the two most prominent um, Fuller's and, and uh, Whitbread. The Whitbread strain, the average was around 65, and the Fuller's was 69. Pretty big uh, delta between two ale yeasts there. Uh, 68.5 was the average for all of them. I will be right on the mean for my 007, but if you are using um, the Fuller strain, Feel free to ferment a little bit warmer. Carbonation volumes, the average was 2.2. Mash pH average was 5.45. Let's get into the recipe. And before we get started, um, keep in mind you can purchase this recipe as well as many other Mean Brews kits um, from Bacchus and Barleycorn. The link is in the description down below. So feel free to hop down there, click on the link, and give them, give them uh, some of your business. He's, uh, the kits are great. It's the most well-packaged yeast that I've seen and um, I really enjoyed what I've made from him so far. Um, let, let's get to the data here, recipe here. So 80% um, Maris Otter for my base malt. My crystal malts, I'm gonna use 7% uh, Crystal 60. I'm gonna use a British, here I chose Fawcett. I really like Fawcett malts. Uh, and then 2.4% Dark Crystal. 8% uh, Biscuit and 2% Chocolate. Uh, for my hop additions, I'm going to use about 17 IBUs of EKG at 60, uh, 0.18 ounce per gallon of EKG at 10, and then 0.1 ounce per gallon of EKG at flame out. And then again, I'm using the whipped bread dry. Here are the three most prominent. I think uh, Imperial House as well as this strain. Look it up if you're if you're an Imperial fan. Um, that that might be a good option here for for that as well. Mean Beer's Recipe 1.050 OG, uh, 24 IBUs, water chemistry we won't go over what we just went over. Mash pH, I'm hitting that, that average 5.44 mash pH. I'm going to do an infusion mash at 153 Fahrenheit or 67 Celsius for one hour. I'm going to mash out sparge and boil for 60 minutes. Chill to 63, oxygenate and pitch a uh, two liter starter for a five gallon batch. So scale that to where you need to scale it. This isn't a huge beer, but a good two liter starter is pretty perfect for this. Uh, ferment at 65 Fahrenheit or 18 Celsius for seven days. And remember, if you're using Fuller's, uh, raise that temperature. And then as, you're, as it starts to teeter out, um, raise it up to 70 Fahrenheit or 21 Celsius and hold it for seven days. And then serve at 2.2 volumes of CO2. All right, that's it for Mean Brews. Um, next recipe I think is going to be German Hellas Export. I just brewed it. And um, I'm going to do that before the check dark. Um, make sure and tune in. That will be in a couple weeks. I've already done the data. So I've uh, 
just got to compile it all together. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you for German Hellas Export. Bye-bye.